All right, welcome. So in this video, we are going to define the derivative. This is a follow-up to the previous video where we used secant and tangent lines to calculate rates of change. So in this video, we're going to start with our limit that we had in the previous video. So we have the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so this is what we had when we were taking those secant lines and sending the distance between the two points on the secant line closer to zero. So we were sending h to zero to get as close to that tangent line as possible, and using the limit allows us to get to the tangent line. So let's make sure we understand what this limit represents. First off, the limit is the instantaneous rate of change of the function f at any point x. Also, we can say that this limit is the slope of the tangent line for any value on our function f. However, this is a lot to say every time, so instead of saying these two phrases, we often just call this the derivative. And specifically, when we've written out the limit, this is the limit definition of the derivative. Behind the scenes, anytime you're computing a derivative, we're using this limit definition to get there. So like most things in math, we have some notation to use when we are talking about the derivative. Specifically, we use f prime of x. That's the f with the apostrophe and then the x. This is to represent a new function, the derivative, and it's called f prime. Another way to write the same thing is to use this d dx of f of x. Basically, two guys were both working on making calculus at the same time. They use different notation. They both have totally really interesting purposes that sometimes highlight unique bits about calculus. But for right now, I just want you to think of this is two ways to write the same thing. And the limit definition of the derivative, this is just a formula that tells us the derivative for any point. So this might seem like a lot, but what I'm really trying to point out is just that there is an f prime of x and a d dx of f of x, and these are two ways to write the same thing, which is just the derivative of f of x. So just to introduce a little bit more vocabulary, we have three different words we usually use when we're talking about things to do with the derivative. So first is the derivative. This is the slope of the tangent line or the instantaneous rate of change of the function. Next, we have differentiate, which means to compute the derivative. So to get the derivative, to find the derivative, differentiate. Here, derivative is a noun, this is an object, and differentiate is a verb, it's a thing we do. Then last, we have differentiability. This is just the ability to differentiate, or the ability to take a derivative. So we had a noun for derivative, a verb for differentiate, Differentiability is an adjective. It's a quality that something has. Okay, so we have our vocabulary. And the last thing I wanna highlight for this video is that the derivative is a function. So if we start with f and f is a function, so is its derivative, f prime. So how do we know this? Well, for something to be a function, every input needs to have only one output. So let's look at the inputs and outputs of these functions. So for f, we say the input is x, and it outputs an f of x that goes with that corresponding x. Then for f prime, we use the same input. So we start with x, but then it outputs f prime of x, so the derivative at that point. And again, the x value that goes as the input for f is the same x that is the input for f prime, the derivative. Now let's think about what this looks like on a graph. So if f is a function, every input has only one output. I'll just sketch a curve here for us to try with. Then we want to think about what the derivative is in relation to this graph of f. So if we think about some tangent lines, the derivative tells us the slope of each of those tangent lines. But since there's only one point on each place in f, there's only one slope at each of those points. So every input of f has only one slope, and so every input of f prime will have only one output, since the output is the slope at that point. So again, it isn't possible that an input of f prime would have two outputs because that would mean there was a point with two different slopes. And that's just not gonna happen since each point on f has only one value. And so there is no way for that value to represent two different slopes at the same time. Okay, so I hope that after watching this, you have a little bit of a better sense for what words we use when we talk about the derivative and that you understand that the derivative is itself a function just like f is a function. Okay, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.